Hey everyone, Chaps here, and today is part 4 of our assembly for the Prusa Mark IV kit. So far we've assembled the frame, the x-axis, and the z-axis, so today we move on to the next extruder. As usual, I've got timestamps down below if you want to skip around, and I've also got links to the other parts of the series and a longer video showing the full process down below. I've also got links to the official online assembly manual, and that's also down in the description. Alright. With the x-axis and z-axis all assembled, we can begin on the next extruder. The printer can be set aside for now, as we'll be focused on this sub-assembly for a little bit. We start with the filament sensor assembly. I wasted so much time here searching for this steel ball, which turns out it was just in a different bag than what I was expecting. Okay, so all the parts in place, this filament sensor gets screwed into place on the heat sink. We can then assemble the spring-loaded ball that assists the sensor. The ball gets stuck to a magnet, which then gets put on the spring. This assembly is then pressed into a slot on the heatsink. We can set that aside for now and start grabbing parts for the idler assembly. This is just two small bearings that get sandwiched between the two halves of the idler lever. When tightening it down though, we need to make sure that the idler bearings can still spin freely, so don't go too tight. The spacer then gets pushed on one end, which will basically act as a pivot later. Okay, so now the main extruder part. We'll need the planetary gear, the housing, and the motor. The heatsink gets placed on top of the motor, and then this plate gets set on top. We can then take the planetary gearbox assembly adapter, and we use that to pick up the gearbox. The adapter is basically just a specialized printed part to help with alignment. With it picked up, we can now press it into place. This step also took me much longer than it should have. I was just trying to be overly cautious, I think. Also, the lighting I was in made it really hard to see the chamfered edge on the ring, and I feel like they probably could have marked that ring a little bit better. Eventually I got it on, about 10 minutes later, and I placed it on the motor. The guide was adamant about making sure it was aligned properly, so I actually took it back off and did it again just to be safe. From here, the idler gets added and the screw is inserted. Next, it's time to lube up the gearbox. I used one of the small Allen keys, but it actually recommends using the tip of a zip tie. Basically, just go around all of the teeth of all of the gears. We can now take the gearbox cover and screw it into place to close things up. I saw an idea online about printing a clear cover for this, and I really wish Prusa had done that by default. They made such a big deal out of this extruder assembly, sorry, the next extruder assembly, and then they cover it up. Oh well. We can put this assembly to the side for now and move on to the other half of the idler. We'll get a bunch of tiny little pieces here and attach them with some spaces in between to make a swiveling part. And as with any swiveling part, just don't over tighten it or else it's not going to rotate. We can now take the springs and put them on the screws, push them through the motor bracket, and screw them into the idler. It's hard to gauge how tight these are due to the spring's resistance, but they tell you to tighten it until just the tip of the screw reaches the front of the idler nut. From here we can start preparing to attach the heatsink and prepare for the nozzle. The thermistor gets attached with a single grub screw. We'll also put two thumb screws on which will hold the nozzle in place. This whole assembly can now be placed on the X carriage, and with three screws, it's now in place. With this all together, we can take some time to do some cable management. There's a channel on the carriage that we'll use to guide the cables up so that they don't get pinched. Now comes the hot end fan. It gets two screws to hold it in place, and then the cable gets fed up the love board and plugged into its labeled slot. The nozzle and hot end assembly is next, which is a cool change from the previous designs. This just slides right up into place and then gets secured by tightening the two thumb screws. Once secured, we'll do a little bit more cable management, feeding stuff up through the guide channel. This next step is assembling the hinged print fan assembly. There's two small magnets, one of which gets pushed into a slot on the fan door. The fan door then gets laid down and the fan cable sits nicely into a channel on it. Folding the fan over clamps the cable down into its channel and we can secure it with a couple of screws. Next, the fan shroud goes into place, which is what will direct the air towards the printed part. As I started tightening this, I realized that the cable was actually getting sandwiched a bit and wasn't properly seated in its channel, so I just unscrewed stuff and reseated it and screwed it back together. From here, we take the other small magnet, it gets a little mark to indicate which side is attracted to the fan door, and then it gets pushed into place on the X carriage. I ended up using an Allen key to push it further down to make sure it was fully seated. You really want to use that mark because if you happen to get that turned around backwards, I don't know if there's any way to really get it back out. The fan door then gets put in position by aligning the hinges and a screw is used to hold it in place. The screw door now swings freely and the magnet will help keep it closed. I did notice a bit of resistance from pushing against the cables, but it wasn't too much of an issue. 
Speaking of which, the extruder cable and the filament sensor can now get attached, as well as the print fan cable. The idler is now locked into place, which was honestly really satisfying. All that's left now are a couple of covers. We'll start with the right side love board cable cover. I hate this part. It's just held by one screw, and I really don't like the way it's seated or the tolerances with it. It probably doesn't help that I thought it was the cause of some of my issues later on, which it ended up it wasn't, but I'm still not a fan of it. After screwing that on and cleaning up some of the cables, the love board can be slid down into place. There's some pretty tight tolerances here, so I'm also not too fond of this one, but it is much better than the old design, I guess. I'll also note that it does seem to flex a bit when I open and close the fan door due to some of the cables getting pulled. The final step here is to tune the belt tension. There's a nice app to assist with this. For right now, I just get it close enough. I'm going to tune it more later. With that, the next extruder assembly is completed. That took an hour and 50 minutes, and it's bringing us to a total of 7 hours even, though we certainly had some inefficiencies along the way that could have been much lower. With this wrapped up, it's time for another break, and in the next video we're going to take a look at the LCD and plenty of the electronics. As always, links to the other videos are down below, and if you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment or hit me up on Twitter. If you found this helpful, please consider liking and subscribing. Thanks for watching everyone, and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.